All right. So before I, I jump in today, just wanted to first thank our hosts to Tango. Um, Guy mentioned it earlier, but I've, I've watched this conference the last few years, and um, it's incredible to see how it's grown and, and at the same time how the, the customer success profession has grown. So thank you to our, our host to Tango for investing in the space and bringing all of us like-minded people together. Um, there's a few of them in the room, so thank you very much. Uh, so I'm going to start off with, uh, with a, a quiz, a pop quiz. It's only one question. Uh, the question is, what is the most valuable asset that any organization has? People, thank you. Um, and, and so given that it's people, it would be natural then to say that an extension of that is, is the ability or the responsibility in managing people and in leading teams and in building teams would thus be the most critical aspect of any organization. Um, it's, it could be the difference and is often the difference between success and failure. So when we take that, coach, that notion and we talk about the most valuable asset um, that an organization has and, and building and leading those individuals and we combine that with millennials, um, we have, a, we have a, a pretty interesting topic to discuss today. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been in customer-facing roles for 17 years. Uh, so roughly half of, half of my working career has been spent, been spent in, in the subscription economy in SaaS. Um, eight years in, in leadership roles. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about Sysmos in a second, seven years at Sysmos, and I'm, and I'm actually a, a six-time axe-throwing champion. Um, it's, that's not the case. I just needed something with a six, and I was recently axe-throwing with my Toronto team, and so um, we'll just pretend. I'm, I'm from Canada, so perhaps that, uh, that stereotype would hold, right? Um, Sysmos, just very quickly, we're a, we're a social intelligence company. At the end of the day, what we do is we pull in data from any and all social media sources we can get our hands on. So everything from, from Twitter, happy, happy 10th birthday to Twitter today, by the way, uh, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, the list goes on and on. We pull that data in and we aggregate it and we let our customers analyze that for whether it be customer service or market intelligence or image recognition and, and so on and so forth. So I did, I did a little audit the other day, and since my time at Sysmos, I've, I've been able to hire up to fi uh, close to 50 people. I'm closing on 50 people during my time in the organization. And so I've had almost all of which has been millennials. So I've, I'm armed and dangerous with lots of experience working with millennials, and I'm, I'm going to share a little bit of, those, uh, bit, of, bit of that wisdom today. So in terms of agenda, um, I'm going to use that wisdom, and I'm going to do uh, some quick myth-busting. Um, pretty interesting once you start to take a look at the topic of millennials online. It's, it's ripe with, with interesting theories. Um, we're going to talk about recruiting and whether you're in, the, in a process of ramping really quickly or maybe you don't have a lot of open positions to fill. Um, what are some of the things to look for? How to build an effective bench? Um, and then I'm going to uh, get into employee success. And I'm a really big believer that customer success uh, starts with employee success and employee engagement, right? That, that is the requisite. You can start to layer on tools like Tatango, which we're, we're proud um, customers of, Sysmos is, the last two years. You can start to layer on the customer journey. You can layer all these things on, but it's, it's people that, that run that, right? And so that's, um, that's, that's, the core, that's the core piece. So let's talk a little bit about millennials and, and millennial myths. So I, I can't think of uh, another cohort that has been the subject of more white papers and more studies and more stereotypes uh, than millennials. It's pretty fantastic to, to take a look online. And, and when, you, when you punch in the word millennials in the Google machine, um, <laughs> it's a little less than flattering. <clears throat> you can try it on your phones. This is, it might change from geo to geo, but the results are going to be the same. And if you did a different iteration of that, uh, millennials think, or any, any iteration of that, it's, it's not positive. Um, and, and to add injury to insult, millennials are also now, now snake people. So there's a, there's a Chrome plugin. It's been, it's been uh, downloaded 21,000 times, and if you install it, it changes the word millennial to snake people. So no, no wonder they're, they're, they're screwed, because we've got to, you know, they're all of a sudden they become a bunch of snake people. Um, there was a study a couple weeks ago uh, just to kind of add a few for more fuel to the fire here. There's a study a few weeks ago that, uh, that uh, does anyone see the serial study with millennials? Yeah, hands up if, if you read it. Not very many people. So uh, serial sales are going down. 
And they've linked it back to millennials. And, and the, key, the key finding was that cleaning a cereal bowl takes too much time. And so as, effect, um, or as an impact, cereal sales are going down. So I'm not going to try to dispel these myths. This is just an example of, unfortunately, the type of stereotypes that are out there. Um, there are a couple quick myths that I can speak to. Um, the first is, is that, that millennials have no job loyalty. Um, and, and, you know, I think the perception here is that they've, they've studied their parents working at the same company their entire lives, and that's it's given them some, it's made them uncomfortable in some way, shape, or form, and, and they're out to, to hop, hop to as many jobs as possible. So uh, I, I've been managing the CS team uh, at Sysmos for the last 30 months. And in that time, I've, I've actually had zero turnover. And also in that time, I've promoted 10 people into other areas of the organization. I'm a big proponent of, of moving people um, up and within an organization internally. So that's 40 people. And all of them, and by, by the way, have, have, have stayed with the company. So it's 40 people in, in a 30-month time frame, none of which have left the company. And millennials do have loyalty. They have loyalty when, when, they, can, when they can see value and when they feel value. And they have loyalty um, when you're delivering a great experience. Right? We talk about, well, this is a customer success, customer experience conference. We talk a lot about that. It's important to also think about the employee experience. And so um, I'll speak to kind of how it is that, that I make good on that um, in, in a bit. But uh, in, in my sample size of one experience, a complete myth, right? If, if you set up the right organization, the right structure, um, you will be able to keep folks like that on your team. Uh, myth number two, millennials want to be CEO tomorrow. And I guarantee you there's folks that walk around and, and they think that, yeah, you know, every millennial here, you know, they, they would like to literally step in that role and be the CEO tomorrow. They think that they can do that. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know that they do have a healthy appreciation for the skills needed and the talents needed to be, to be a CEO. Um, so I don't think anyone uh, would, would believe the fact that, yes, you know, literally the, they want to be the CEO tomorrow, but they would love to get the, the, the CEO advice tomorrow. Um, and it's important to set up a process and a structure that you can percolate ideas up, right? It doesn't have to be on a one-to-one -one basis. There's not, that's not going to be effective. But you know, as an example, we had a hacking competition not too long ago, uh, not too, too dissimilar to what a, code, a coding group would do. And the, winner, the winning idea got presented to the CEO. So looking for opportunities to get um, thoughts and, and bubble up product ideas even from the CEO goes a long way. Uh, last myth. So millennials... God forbid, care about work-life balance. Um, another common myth that we hear. And in reality, you, know, you can't be in the field of customer success and not have a dynamic job. You know, customers' problems aren't nine to five. Uh, they need help uh, all sorts of you know, hours of the day, weekends. Um, my, my team's comfortably able to, to meet them um, and meet that expectation. And in reality, we all have an office in our, in our pocket, right? Our phones are our offices. And so just because you don't necessarily see uh, butts in seats from the hours of 9 to 5 doesn't mean that, that certainly millennials aren't working hard and, and thinking about the customer. So let's get into then uh, the topic of recruiting. And so I mentioned in the onset that, that the most valuable asset are our employees to an organization. Recruiting is really the lifeblood of, of your company. And I, you know, I always tell my managers, if they have uh, a role they're trying to fill, that then is your number one priority. Nothing else is more important than, than striking when the iron's hot, bringing people on in the windows that you need to bring them on. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about my experiences as it comes to, as it comes to recruiting. So the first step is building your bench. Um, and I've had great success partnering with colleges and universities uh, in this regard to the extent that, that we, we put our product in, their class, in the classroom. Um, and we support a college and university partner like we would any other customer. And, and in return, that's really delivering a lot of exposure for Sysimos. Um, it's, it's creating a lot of folks that are gung-ho after they graduate to, to get in the workforce. And there's no better feeling than being immediately productive. If you could imagine on your first day at a job and, and using a tool, perhaps, that, that you're going to look like a rock star, right? Um, and, and to the degree that all of your products make sense, you know, it's, it's a great thing to do. Not every product's going to be applicable, but where, where it is, I highly recommend you to partner up with local universities and, and get your product in their hands. A natural extension of that, then, is, is an internship program. Um, 
I'm always, I'm always amazed at the amount of companies that don't have internship programs, you know, even on a customer success team. At any given point in time, I have at least two to three interns. Uh, we're looking at, at branching that out to the, our other offices globally. And what it allows me to do is, is give a really good experience for, for my CS team, anyone that's interested in management, anyone that's interested in, 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 in leading people, um, they run, this is their program. It's, it's completely self-sufficient from the recruiting to the training, sitting down doing reviews. We, we, treat, we treat an intern like they are an employee. And, and it really gives, you know, I talked about providing an experience earlier. This provides a really good experience for my team um, to kind of take that ball and run with it. Um, and, and lastly, I, I love any time I can get a reference. You know, even if I'm not hiring, I, I speak to any and all individuals that are referred to us. And I've had the, the most success with, with references. Uh, a, they have a built-in support system, right? The person that brought them into your organization, they put their, their good name on the line their reputation on the line, they're going to they're gonna make sure that that person succeeds in your company. Um, and B, I'm also a really big proponent of having, having friends at work, but uh, if, if, you're a, if you're a follower of the, of, of the Gallup school of thought, uh, a huge indicator, a huge linkage between employee engagement is do you have a best friend at work? And they use the word best friend at work. I know it's a bit, makes people a bit uncomfortable. It's a strong word, but uh, the more you can bring references on board, it also has that benefit. Um, and it creates you know, just a tremendous amount of camaraderie, camaraderie amongst the team. So we're, you're, you're out sort of building your bench. You're building a mechanism to have a good flow of sort of exposure and people coming into your company. It's also really important, given the audience, given the millennial audience, to know how to pitch your company and yourself. And there's three components that I find uh, resonate really well with 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 millennials, and, and I say that, I mean, these are all just things that make sense anyway, um, but in the context of millennials, I, I feel like these really tru truly do resonate. So, so being able to explain your company culture, it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, it's something that we all do and we all can do, but uh, millennials have a really good bullshit detector. And they can tell if you're just sort of spewing off some line, you know, they can feel that. And whenever I talk about the culture of Sysmos, I really take the time to make sure it's personal, and, and I give sort of a rich, authentic story around, to me, what it means, uh, versus perhaps reading the paragraph that, that the marketing team um, came up with. Brand values, you know, sa same thing applies. I think it's table stakes in this day and age to have a well-articulated uh, brand, brand value to the degree that you can associate your brand with, with a bigger cause. Again, it makes sense just for the fact that it makes sense, but it also resonates quite well with this audience. And lastly, leadership philosophy. So all of my managers have a leadership philosophy that they've committed to paper, they've written down, and that they share with their teams, uh, myself included. And if anyone, I don't know if anyone's ever gone through that exercise, it's, it's actually really hard to do when you sit down and you really think about you know, your perspective on what motivates people and, and how to motivate people and what makes them tick and, and how you'd like to work with folks and how you'd like to work with them. When you start to write that down, it's actually pretty challenging. And this isn't, you know, a one-line mission statement. This is, in some cases, you know, multi-paragraph long. So um, I, I like to ask in every interview uh, with a candidate, tell me about a boss that you had that you just had an amazing relationship with, and tell me why it is you like working with that boss. And what happens is when they answer that question, they're going to tell you how it is that they would like to be managed. Right? That's not the question, but that's what you're going to hear. You're going to hear exactly how it is that they would like to be managed. And it also opens the door to let you share what your leadership philosophy is. And it's an amazing conversation that happens, right? It's, it's just a, it's a connection that you don't typically have in an interview, and I think it's really fruitful, not necessarily in, in round one, but um, once you kind of get down the path with a specific candidate. So we have our, our candidate pool. We've... we've you know, pitch the company, we've pitched ourselves. Um, you have to also then understand, you know, who are the diamonds in the rough? You know, who exactly is it that is going to, you know, be the next rock star of your organization? And I was told by a CEO once, you know, always think to yourself, is this person world class? Is, or can this person be world class? And when you ask that question uh, to yourself, it kind of really helps you delineate from candidate to candidate. Um, but one of the first steps we, we did as, as a leadership team is we sat down and 
we boiled the ocean and came up with, with six core competencies that we felt um, meant success in the CS role. Uh, and then we built interview questions around them. So this is, it's not rocket science. You know, a competency for us could be, could be teamwork. The ability for a CS manager to be able to partner with marketing, par partner with engineering, partner with technical, partner with sales, right? There's a lot of that that happens. So um, I, I'd recommend boiling that down if, if you haven't already. Um, it's often said I, I, I'm a proponent of looking at will versus skill and emotional IQ. Uh, the, the amount of work that has to be done internally and externally with a customer is, is, is profound in the CS role, and, and I really do put a lot of a weight and stock into that. And then standardizing interview questions so that you can have an apples-to-apples -apples, uh, comparison. So last, last section here. So I said this earlier, but, but employee success is, is the requisite to customer success. Um, there's a study that came out in the 1980s, uh, came out of Harvard University. It's called Catching Up with the Service Profit Chain. Um, if you haven't read it, I, I highly recommend it. The core of this study is it, it, it took a look at very successful companies, and success was defined as highly profitable um, and high, high rates of growth. So it took a number of companies that, that had these characteristics. The goal of the study was, what's, this, what's the common thread that's weaved between all of them? And that common thread is engaged employees. The, the, the more engaged an employee is, the longer they're with your company. And, and that's so important because the longer you're with a company, you, be, you become more efficient. You build up a lot of tribal knowledge. Um, you, know, you, you, you can help the customer in ways that obviously someone who's brand new couldn't. And customers feel that. You've all been, I know, at a, at a restaurant where you're dealing with a bartender or a server, and then you just, you just know you're in good hands. You just feel the experience you know, exuding from their pores, and you can't, you can't replicate that. Um, and, and so the, the chain of events then that leads to that is an engaged employee uh, experience efficiency that leads to engaged customers and the, you know, the chain is continued. So the hardest bullet here, I think, is in creating engaged employees is creating an engaging workplace. Um, so I have, through the power of television, boiled down uh, in six steps uh, what, what I feel are the main um, components of creating a, an engaging workplace. I'm not going to go through all of these. Um, I will say that I do have a very flat organization. So I don't have um, junior roles, senior roles, team leads, um, regional team leads. I, I, I feel like that causes a lot of drama and a lot of unneeded process, really. It, it, it becomes sort of the thing that everyone fixates on. What I do have is a really well-developed salary band uh, system um, with very distinct benchmarks and very distinct um, criteria that you need, and I, I have no problems fast-tracking people through that. Um, training and development, I think your internal experience at an organization is the best way to, to be trained and become developed and getting exposure to different, different um, groups. Um, engaging leadership, so I'll, 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 I'll dive into this one and then we're going we're gonna to move on, but engaging leadership to me is understanding what your team's strengths are, right? It's the whole philosophy of putting your strengths to work. And, and knowing when someone's in flow, right? You, it, there's no better joy than, than being able to do what it is you're good at in your role, even if that's 5% of your job, right? Look for ways to make that 5% broader. Look for ways to let that individual work with another department in order to, to scratch that itch, reflect that muscle. For, for me, that's really, really important. Um, and lastly, recognizing and rewarding performance. There's no more powerful words than good job. Every day you should be looking for an opportunity to say good job. You know, I just, I just said that about Tango to start this, this, this talk. But, and you think the more senior someone is, the less you need to hear that. Not the case, right? Senior folks need to hear that as well. And, and you'd also think that if someone's having challenges performing, that if you tell them good job, you're going to lose all leverage. And, and, and it's going to get worse. It's not the case. Everyone has to hear those words. So look for opportunities to say good job. Um, through Gallup, there's a, a survey called the Gallup Strengths Finder. It's, has anyone heard of the Gallup Strength, Strengths Finder? Good, quite a few of you. So for those not familiar, it's, it's about 100 questions or so. At the end of it, you get a list of what your top strengths are as an individual. Every single person on my team take that survey. They post the results at their desk. This is Valerie on the right-hand side. I, I have here what her core strengths are. On the left, I have what the footprint is of my team. 
And I'm going to just read the definition really quickly of a couple of these. And when I read it, think about the CS role and what you know about the CS role and what's important. And so for my team, the number one talent is input. Um, having a, a, have a craving to know more. Often they like to collect and archive all kinds of information. Uh, achiever, work hard and possess a great deal of stamina. They take immense satisfaction in being busy and productive. Uh, learner, a great, great desire to learn and want to, to continuously improve. The process of learning rather than the outcome excites them. And I, 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 the list goes on, but this is a really good validator uh, to your approach. My approach is, is how I'm building my bench and what core competencies I'm looking for and, and, and you know, the experience that I deliver. This is a really good validator to see kind of what's come out uh, at the other end of that. And so I, I recommend everyone take a look at the, the strengths pointers. Uh, last slide, how are we on time? Wrapping up, 14 seconds. So, uh, so I, won't read, uh, I won't read this through. This is sort of if I were to con condense the last you know, 20 minutes into a couple key bullets, um, this, is, this is what they are. So thank you. Right on time, zero, zero. <laughs>